Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to check in with Bitcoin and the Wyckoff accumulation stage. I think maybe we might be seeing several secondary tests, which we'll check out on the chart as well. Plus, we've got a lot of altcoin news coming up today, in particular stuff on FTX, one of the cryptos that I've been watching and waiting for a low price to be buying in at. So without further ado, make sure you hit the subscribe button bell notification icon. There's a lot of you that are watching without being subscribed. Make sure you do that so you get the updates which are time sensitive, especially with the charts. Of course, like the video up. Let's dive in. Let's start with the coin market caps at Bitcoin 32,680. So we have dropped under our little peak that we saw yesterday. Our market cap's 1.323 trillion. So we're sitting around the 50% level of the total market cap. So that's what we want to see. We want to see it sitting around that point or just a little higher down to around the 61% from the top. We're still okay. So we'll we'll check that out on the chart in just a moment. Ethereum 1900. I don't think we'd ever see a, an Ethereum holding its ground under 2000 for some time. But the last seven days we know already has been pretty hefty. 15% off, 21% off, 20% on Binance. And Cardano has been one of the favorites on this last move. So it's up 4% today. And I'll show you that on the charts in just a moment. In particular, the Cardano dominance. All right, let's take a look at the fear and greed index 22 today. So that doesn't come into our plan to be buying. And like we just saw, we're at around 32,000, around 32,800. That leaves us at a 5.4% loss on our current investment of 10,000. So the idea here is just to keep us updated with a plan and to not freak out when we see our balance go into the negative because our long-term view is, of course, Bitcoin cryptocurrencies should be increasing. So we'll come back to this if we need to uh, purchase any cryptocurrencies in the coming days. But an update is always a good one to look at. The dominance is having troubles here at the moment. It's just having a little bit of a pullback from this resistance level. So we have had a high of 48.6, so 48%, 48.6, and we now had some resistance at 48.2. As with all markets, we don't expect them to go straight up. I would have liked to have seen this go further in this current move before we saw a pullback, before we saw a lower low. That's a weaker sign to the dominance. This is only a daily chart, so I'm not overly concerned. The weekly chart is what I'm really wanting to find here and uh, see the major trend continue up. And we still have three days, 19 hours to go until the weekly bar closes. Ideally, we want to start pushing back into that 48% zone. 46, 47, 48 is okay at the moment. And then obviously the main thing here is to get past this old high of 48.7. So anywhere from that 49.50, we're looking good again as stronger Bitcoin dominance, but this can take weeks to play out. I'm not expecting this to happen in the next few hours or you know, the next half hour after you watch this video. This can take weeks for us to continue building strength in the Bitcoin dominance. The, thing, the other thing to note here is the volume is starting to lack, but we have had quite solid volume from this low. So I suspect it'll be a little bit of time here until we start to break out again, because if we want this market to go pretty strong long term, we need to see the money come back into Bitcoin and the strength come back into Bitcoin first. And then everything else starts to follow from that point. BTC, the Wyckoff pattern, which we've all been following here. Now we've seen the major sell off. That was the 19th of May. These can be secondary tests. So we've got a point here and a point here, and they're just going to look like STs on the chart. So that's just going to be ST, ST. This might be the last or it might be another secondary test. So we have uh, the selling climax, which I believe is this day here of the 19th. And that was very climactic. We did a live stream that day and things were crazy. Everyone was wild. Emotions are high. That's what I expect in a selling climax, the point at which widening spread and selling pressure usually climaxes and heavy or panicky selling. I felt all of this on the day by the public is being absorbed by larger professionals, professional interests at or near a bottom. Often prices will close well off the low in an in a SC selling climax. So that's why you need to have the volume on these charts. If you are watching them, you can have candles, you can have bars, but ideally this is what we want to see. Selling climax, I believe, is this bar here, and you can see the volume, uh, the close 
happened well and truly off the low. So this meets Wyckoff's uh, idea of what a selling climax is. It meets his meaning here. Now, secondary test, it is common to have multiple STs after a selling climax. So we don't just have to have two or three. It could be many, many of them. And this could also be another selling climax or it could be springtime where we get that final test. We don't know yet. And I don't want to get my hopes up to say that we're going into phase D when we could still be in phase B for quite some time, especially if we're getting lengthening cycles. So nothing is confirmed that we're going into a phase D, like we've just seen a phase C and we're going straight into a phase D. It is possible, but we don't know yet until we get these other signs here, LPS, BU, SOS, and that is further down here. Our last point of support, sign of strength, back up. Now we have all of this in the Investor Accelerator. You can find a link to that in the description down below. It's a volume course specifically looking at Wyckoff indicators, and you can find a link to that down below, the Investor Accelerator. Get your membership now. And next is Ethereum. We're going to use the same techniques on any charts, stocks, cryptocurrencies, anything that has a chart, we can uh, measure that and track it. So Ethereum as well, selling climax 19th, everything had a climax on that day. And it looks like we're going for some more secondary tests, potentially the last, but I'm not quite sure yet. I think we've still got a little bit of time at these levels, especially after such heavy emotion. So ETH still looking okay. A little bit of a reversal here at the moment. I suspect this could hold us up just for a little bit longer than what, we, uh, what we've what we looked at recently. So I'd, I hope we don't fall to any new lows just yet. Just a little more time at these levels to base out and find some more support. ETH, BTC uh, has been pretty solid compared to a lot of other cryptos against their Bitcoin value. But again, it has fallen from its highs. That's to be expected. Hasn't fallen that much uh, and holding up reasonably well, just like Cardano. And Cardano's dominance has started to make its way up again. This is a nice sign for Cardano, especially during these periods where everything else has been lagging. And uh, yeah, pretty much looking pretty strong. This is just ADA.D. So it's the dominance in the cryptocurrency space. How much volume, how much money is in Cardano compared to everything else? So we're at a 3%. 3.19% dominance in the overall market caps. If you're not already, make sure you're staking your Cardano with the Investor Accelerator pool. Anyone can join. Find the links that in the description down below, a video, tutorial video on how to stake your ADA to earn interest. We've got a couple more blocks today, which is absolutely great news for everyone that's staking with the Investor Accelerator staking pool. Now over to Twitter. Make sure you're following us over there. Lots of news coming up on Twitter. We've seen Mark Cuban talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the digital gold. It wins that. But now he's talking about how to measure other cryptos such as Ethereum. And people will underestimate or understand the valuation metrics of network platforms and invest based on those. So we're seeing Ethereum, we're seeing Bitcoin really take the stage, potentially Cardano as well especially if we're looking at the dominance, Cardano's dominance in the space. So that's what I'm seeing here, understanding it from someone who has been in the tech space for some time. I don't agree with everything that he says, but again, he's got a little more experience than I do in the tech space. So network platforms invest based on them. We've also got the co-creator of Dogecoin buying Dogecoin after eight years, vowing never to buy crypto again. He does everything that the rest of us do. Check the price seven times. It was up 10%, down through, back to 3%. Anyway, seems healthy. So even the Dogecoin co-creator is getting back into Doge. FTX news. But this is good for cryptocurrency altogether. Sam from Alameda and FTX Exchange, he is making the big plays in cryptocurrency, going after the Major League Baseball. There's going to be FTX logos on all of the umpires with patches on every MLB umpire's uniform. So it looks like they're really making big plays at sport. We've seen FTX go for Miami, uh, the Miami Arena. So it's going to be the FTX Arena for where the uh, Miami Heat play their NBA games. So this is looking pretty good. FTX is one we've cover we are covering on the channel, and I'm still tracking that against its Bitcoin value as we always do with our cryptos. So FTX, I'm excited. This is a Solana, part of the Solana ecosystem. And uh, yeah, a lot of good news coming out for these guys here. On to the miners. So this has been big news. 
We talked about Bitcoin miners moving to Kazakhstan, especially when they were looking at, well, at least the Miami mayor was trying to get them across to Miami, but it just seems probably too hard, too difficult. Not to say that they won't go over there either, but Kazakhstan is next door and they can get over there a little quicker, a little easier. And this seems to be happening now. So Kanan reached a total net revenue of 61 million in the first quarter, lower than the 68 million in quarter one of 2020. So lower than one year ago, but higher than the the 38 million in the last quarter of 2020. So they got a net income now, 200 grand. You'd think that miners are making a ton of money, but I guess there is a lot of money spent in power. So they need to keep those costs well and truly down. So whereas the company had registered losses for both quarter one and quarter four, even though they had made $68 million losses, I guess maybe they're buying more equipment at that time, especially knowing that the market was picking up. You just want to buy as much equipment as you can when no one else is buying it because now equipment is very expensive. So just blow all your profit margins out of the water. But that's good news for Bitcoin as well. The miners coming back on board. BIT mining ships equipment to Kazakhstan as well. So as China intensifies crackdowns, uh, equipment includes 320 Bitcoin mining machines, computing power of 18.2 petahashes per second. Don't ask me how much that is or how much that can actually produce. It just sounds like a lot. But either way, makes news. We have miners getting out of China. They knew what was coming, like we talked about in the live stream yesterday with Digital Asset News, Rob from DAN. Uh, he's speaking with miners especially, and uh, it does look like they knew what was coming and they've been making plans. Now it's time to action those plans while the market is down. Mike Novogratz is still super bullish on Bitcoin. Novogratz believes that the Chinese government crackdown is a long-term positive for Bitcoin. We've spoke, spoken about this as well, and I do think that's the case. If we can decentralize the mining from China, I think it's going to make it a much, much healthier space long-term. Ecosystem is much more mature. Every single bank is working on their own crypto project, how they can get Bitcoin to their wealthy clients. I think a lot of clients that didn't buy the first time will see this, the low prices, as an opportunity to buy. I happen to agree as well. Little update, Ethereum London hard fork, EIP 1559 to go live on Ropston Network in five hours. So this was three hours ago. By the time you guys see this, it's probably already out. So this is the big thing that everyone has been waiting for, the hard fork to potentially make Ethereum deflationary. So I think this will take effect. Well, it should take effect now, but in terms of the pricing, I think this is going to play out over the long term. It's going to be a net positive for Ethereum. More good news for Ethereum. We've got Israel. Bank of Israel adopts Ethereum to run digital shekel. So this is just an internal pilot. Doesn't mean they're going to do it, but they've been in discussions about uh, working on a central bank digital currency for quite some time. And of course, this is going to be on the Ethereum network. So if we've got a few of these countries piloting a digital currency of their own, of course, it's going to be on the Ethereum network. This is just more adoption to the network, longer term, EIP 1559. All this sort of stuff is really leaning towards an uh, increase in Ethereum price longer term longer term. Remember that as well. Australians lost three times more funds in scams via bank transactions than Bitcoin payments. However, it's still extremely high with crypto Bitcoin payment scams. And so what we can see is so it's nearly 100 million for bank payments, uh, 26 and a half million for Bitcoin and crypto payments. That's a huge amount of money. So I just wanted to bring that up, especially for Aussies and everyone, is that there are so many scams. I've had messages very often. Uh, I had one recently, someone lost $15,000 to a scam because they thought it was me. I am not messaging you to invest in anything, guys. Please be very careful. Twitter, they are coming out left, right and center. Instagram, left, right and center. And then of course, in the comment section of YouTube, do not message any of them. I'm sure most of you get it, but if it sounds too good to be true, it's going to be too good to be true. Get rid of it. I'm only ever talking about you doing the hard work to understand your education and make a better go at investing. I'm not saying, come on, throw your money with me and I'll triple it, quadruple it, okay? Scams are out there. Be very, very safe. Last shout out here, Daily Hoddle mentions myself looking at key target levels. So we've talked about these. You can see them on the channel. Uh, essentially, we're looking at the altcoins, the halfway points. So remember, guys, this is the support levels for our altcoin markets. Now, if you want to learn more about cryptocurrency and investing, check out the Investor Accelerator. It's still at our regular price of $7.99. It is going up in August. 
We've got a fixed time for that now. It's in August. So make sure you get that in. For Aussies, tax time's coming up end of the year. So if you want to get in some tax returns on your education, why not check it out now before the 30th of June? Link to this is in the description down below. Catch me on Twitter and on Instagram. If you've got your super fund and you want to get that into cryptocurrency, check out New Brighton Capital. Link to that is also in the description down below. Do that before June 30th when tax time rolls around for us here in Australia. Get your super out of those ridiculous AMPs for 2% and go and start gambling on some cryptocurrencies. Not financial advice. Talk to your financial advisors and your accountants. I'll see you guys at the next video. Remember to like the video up, subscribe to the channel down below, bell notification icon. See you next time. Until then, have more fun to get more done.